My aunt nonchalantly told us last time we visited her that one night, when she was a teenager, she spent the night at a friend's house. She went to bed and around midnight woke up to her friend's older sister coming home from work, seeing a man inside a house and screaming bloody murder which woke her dad up. A man had broken in. Her dad chased him out of the house. She got a good look at him before he ran out but didn't realise until years later when she saw a documentary that it was none other than a notorious LA serial killer and rapist Richard Ramirez, aka The Night Stalker. This was the early 80s and she said after doing a little research about him she's now convinced that must have been one of his first home invasions and was testing the waters. That night he had removed the screen and crawled in through an open kitchen window and moved everything off the counter silently whilst everyone slept. Definitely creepy and extremely interesting to hear first hand from someone in my own family. This story is from 1993. I was a teenager at the time, no more than 13 years old. I guess I want to tell this story because I grew up in the richest county in Michigan and a wealthy city where all the teenagers drove Mustangs to school. So creeps are all over the place and living in a wealthy suburb guarantees no immunity. My friend Jenny and I were at the bookstore in the mall. We were about 13 and our parents had dropped us off. At this time we were into metaphysical stuff so we were at this section in the bookstore. I was at one end of the book aisle and my friend was at the other, so we were maybe no more than ten feet apart. I started reading a book and my friend says, Nicole, get over here. You gotta understand I was kind of the pushover in this relationship, always had to do what Jenny said. I was getting tired of it so I said, I will in a minute, I'm reading something. She made a second request, and I replied rather bitchy. Why don't you come over here? At her third request, I actually met her gaze, and she had a concerned look on her face, so I did go over. She then told me a guy was looking up my shorts while I was reading with his tongue hanging out. I said, who? And she pointed to the guy as he made a beeline out of the bookstore. I was so pissed off, I felt violated. I started marching toward the exit of the store and into the mall. I was going to call this guy out and get mall security involved. When you exit the bookstore, there is a pair of escalators to the right, maybe, 20, 30 feet away. The guy got on the escalator, and just about when I was going to yell and call the guy out, he looked back at me. His eyes were like bug eyes, wild and the way he looked at me scared the shit out of me. The only way I could describe it was he looked like he wanted to kill me. Just pure hatred on his face. This happened 24 years ago, but I can bet you if I saw this guy in a lineup, I would be able to identify him. I will never forget his face or the way he looked at me. I froze outside of the bookstore as he star stared at me the whole time while he took the escalator up cold, angry, murderous stare. Before I met his gaze, I was determined to call this perv out, but after I was a shell. I never reported him. I stood there in disbelief. I can guarantee you this guy went on to molest kids and probably murdered some. I still feel guilty for not reporting the guy, but I was a scared teenager. Now I know why victims of abuse stay silent. There doesn't need to be a verbal threat. Sometimes the way someone looks at you is enough. This isn't about me, but my friend's aunt. She heard a knock on the door and thought it was her boyfriend, so she wanted to scare him and got one of her kitchen knives. She opened the door and yelled and screamed at him. Turns out it wasn't her boyfriend, but a man asking if she needed any plumbing work done. 
but when he saw the knife, he left. She looked out of the window and saw a yellow VW bug. Ends up being Ted Bundy. I was about nine years old at the time. My mum was a very protective person, but she let me ride my bike on the street behind us. Now I only ride my bike at the end of the street because the neighbours had their sprinklers on every day around the time I rode my bike. This particular day though, the neighbours went away on vacation, so there were no sprinklers. I still rode at the end of the road since I was used to it. At the end of the road, there is obviously a dead end. Behind the dead end are the woods. I wasn't really scared or creeped out by anything at the time, but for some reason I had a bad feeling about those woods. Anyway, I tried to ignore it for that day and continued riding. I stopped when I heard some sort of noises coming from the woods, kind of like twigs snapping and leaves crunching. I was facing the opposite direction of the woods and was too scared to turn around. Once the noises got too close to me, I finally turned around to see the biggest shock of my life. A tall, skinny man, dressed in all black, holding something very sharp in his hand, smiling at me. I started to scream in shock while hopping on my bike and pedalling as fast as I could back to my house. When I got home, I was breathing like I'd just ran a marathon. I threw my bike on the ground while falling myself. I went inside acting as normal as I could. My mum asked me if I was all right and I said yes. I went to my room in relief. Who knows what that man was gonna do to me. I'm just glad that I had some common sense and escaped in time. I used to live in Orlando in a somewhat shady part of town. The five deadbolts on the apartment door should have raised some flags. But I was a student, and there were a lot of students in the area, and I was young and not very wary. Our less nice part of town bordered a very nice part of town. There was a 4-6 road that ran through the area and a jogging path that ran alongside of it. Our apartment complex was right next to the road and the trail and a little further down was my local gas station where I would walk once a day to buy cigarettes and other things. Because of the layout, it was easy for me to walk out my door, step on the path and walk 10 minutes to the gas station. Walking through the complex took longer. Sure I was a girl walking alone, but the path bordered this huge road with a lot of traffic and right across the street was a busy strip mall with fast food places and such, so it wasn't like a dark path in the woods or anything. And hey, I always brought pepper spray, paid attention to my surroundings, etc. So one night, I head to the gas station around 11pm. As I'm walking along the path, I hear something behind me. Turning around, I notice about 30 yards behind me, there's a car on the trail, like it had to have pulled off the road up onto the path. I've now stopped and I'm staring and a guy gets out of the driver's side and starts walking around the grass between the trail and the road as if he's looking for something. Oh, I think. Something must have fallen out of his car and he's pulled over to search for it. I keep walking. As I'm walking, I'm hearing something behind me again. I stop and turn. The guy is now 15 yards behind, still no headlights, and I turn as he stops the car, or he stops the car as I turn. Again he gets out and it looks like he's searching for something in the grass, but he's closer now, and I'm a little creeped out. I'm not close enough to see the gas station so I pick up the pace. The next time I turn he's even closer. He stops again when I look but he doesn't get out of the car. I don't want to just take off to let him know he scared me, but I am now power walking. My pepper spray is in my hand, but what does pepper spray do against a car? 
I throw a look over my shoulder, and he's only a few yards behind me. He doesn't stop this time. The distance is closing. Fuck it, I take off. I judge the distance to the gas station to be too far along the trail, but there's some trees and stuff on the other side of the path from the road, so I bolt into them and through a little ditch. I judge the distance to the gas station to be too far along the trail, but there's some trees and stuff on the other side of the path from the road, so I bolt into them and through a little ditch towards the light of the station which is now right in front of me. It felt like the dude in the car was going fast. I look behind me as I'm running through the ditch and I see him through the space in the trees. He slows down and he's just cruising along the section of the path I left. I continue my sprint to the gas station where I know I'll feel safe. The owners and employees all know me. I make it out front and catch my breath, watching the part of the jogging path that meets the intersection. I see the car clearly for the first time. It's one of those brown car truck combos with a tan stripe along the side. The dude drives up to the trail to the intersection, flips his lights on and floors it onto the main road, disappearing. Up until that point I was running on a mix of adrenaline and feeling that maybe I'm being a stupid but better than safe than sorry feeling. Once I had made it inside the gas station I pretty much broke down shaking. To this day I still don't know what that guy's intentions were. Maybe he didn't even see me and was just looking for something. Maybe he was planning to hit me with his car and drag me off. Maybe he was an asshole that was just trying to scare me. Either way, I had my boyfriend come get me from the gas station and I've never walked alone at night again.